I think that's about all we had for Ruthless. Should we touch on UFC Austin real quick? Yeah, I didn't get to watch the whole show. Obviously, we were working. Um, but I did watch a couple highlights. The one highlight you showed me, uh, who was that? That was nasty, picked- man. That was Drakkar Close. Yeah. So Joel Sele- Joe Selecki had him in an arm bar, and Drakkar just picked him up and like slammed the side of his head against the canvas, and he was out immediately. So much fun. It, was, it reminded me of a Rampage Jackson knockout. Um, I know... One of our other guys over at Carnage Media, Zach Dominique, is a big Rampage guy. Um, mm. This was a very, very similar knockout. Um, I, been, I will say, I have been seeing people comment like, oh, this proves that jujitsu's dead in the MMA. And I was like, buddy, relax. It's <laughs> slams happen, <laughs> man. This is, a cra- yeah. this is a crazy, crazy sport. But that, honestly, could we see more people maybe practicing slams? But normally you don't want to slam in an armbar because that could just help him sink in it deeper. So it's a double-edged sword. Um, I think Drakkar probably knew that if he didn't do that, Joe was going to finish it. So yeah, great, great fight. Um, I'm sure he ended up getting $50,000 after that. Um, another big fight that we saw in here, Misha Tate, a former champ, ended up walking away with a rear naked choke submission. Um, I will say... Gentlemen, there are not very many professional athletes named Clayton out there, but there was one who fought on Saturday (laughs) night over in Austin, Texas, Clay Guida. Uh, He ended up losing a unanimous decision, but the guy's like 42 years old now. He's had, I think, Saturday was his 62nd pro fight. Yeah, he's one of my favorites. I love Clay Guida. He's entertaining and... A great guy. So like I just love I love watching his fights no matter win or lose or not. Absolutely. I believe he is the longest tenured UFC like continuously tender tenured UFC fighter. He's mm-hmm. been around since okay. 2006. Um he was Strike Force's inaugural log- lightweight champion. Um guys like Andre Arlovsky, uh Nick Diaz, they've been around longer like in the UFC, but they left for a little bit. Like Arlovsky's mm-hmm. been a little bit of everywhere. Uh, Nick Diaz went over to Strike Force for a little bit. So shout out to Clay Guida. Unfortunately, he didn't come out on top, but Sean Brady ended up submitting Kelvin Gastelum. That was kind of a shocker. Yeah. Um, I gave up on Sean Brady. I'm not going to lie. I thought that once Bilal beat him, he would he would be done. But Kelvin mm-hmm. Gastelum's a tough guy, man. So that's that's a serious win for Sean Brady. That yeah. That kept his career alive for sure. Oh, for sure. Yep. What well, another one? I watched the highlight of Bobby Green KO, and I think, was, I think the refs let that go a little bit too long. <laughs> I think a little bit is an understatement. Man. Yeah. He could have stopped it after. So Bobby got put down, and realistically, if you go down face down, you can stop it right there, and I doubt mm-hmm. that many people will be upset. But he let it go, and then he let it go. And then he let it go, and he's and he let it go defending, defending like this, face down on the on the mat, and get a couple of them in there. You let him. Okay, let's see if he can. He's gonna defend himself and fight back. After like the second punch, he's not even moving. He's staying in this fetal position. He's done. Nope, he let it go until he was fully unconscious. It was like twenty seconds of Jalen Turner, and this is not on Jalen Turner for no. any of you Twitter morons out there. Exactly. Um, he's doing- Um, It's his job to get in there and and punch. Punch until the ref takes him off, right? So that's that's definitely on the ref. Um, Do better, for sure. That's Kev touches on this all the time for some of our, like, first-time listeners. Fighter safety should be the first thing in any any combat sport. doesn't matter what it is. Boxing, MMA, jiu-jitsu even. doesn't matter. Fighter safety needs to come first. So definitely do better. Dana wasn't happy, obviously. You know how... Mm -hmm quiet and um you know censored he tends to be when he gets upset so <laughs> I, I doubt i doubt that we will be seeing that guy anymore that's exactly that's sure. yeah in our main event though <laughs> arman i'm not even gonna try and pronounce his last name <laughs> knocked out benil Daryush in a little over a minute um unfortunately this is this is the part of the story where we talk about benil's demise he got knocked out the first round a little bit ago i <laughs> Actually, I have a little bit of a funny story about this one. So I was in Alabama. I didn't have my phone or anything. I was in Alabama when he fought Charles Oliveira. 
and we're sitting there. It's a Saturday night, and I've been I've been good all day. And I'm <laughs> sitting there. I'm talking to my trainer, and I was like, "Hey, can you can you do something for me?" And she was like, "What?" And I was like, "Can you can you look up the the results of the UFC from last weekend?" And she was like, "Yeah." So she did, and that was the only fight that I wanted to know. And I was I was kind of shocked that Charles put him out in round one, but I went back and watched it. Charles is just that dynamic, but Armand, man, I, I was kind of surprised that it only took him a little over a minute, but I know good, good for him. But unfortunately this, this is probably the beginning of the end for Benil. Yeah. I feel like it's going to start being like a Tony Ferguson type of deal. <laughs> I hope it doesn't get, that. <laughs> he's just going to keep getting knocked out and man, He's got Tony Ferguson fights in two weeks. And I know. If, if he gets knocked out by Patty Pimblett, guys, I I might have to retire. I'm not gonna lie. I um, I, I would just cry for multiple days. I'm sure. I'm hoping Ferguson just dogs him because I don't. I'm not a big fan of Patty Pimblett because I don't think he's that good. I think that the UFC tried to build him up a little too early. Like they build him as, oh, this next up and comer from England, which is which is important. England's a big market for MMA, so it's good for them to have a star. And this was when Tom, he came around when Tom Aspinall got hurt. Like yeah. he, that was when he was just kind of breaking onto the scene. So they really tried to market him. And then he had that kind of weird fight against Jared Gooden. A lot of people thought he lost it. And <laughs> it's... I don't know, man. Even Michael Bisping talks about like he holds his chin out here. Almost. He's got so many holes. Like all that it's gonna so take. Many. Like if he fought Justin Gaethje right now, Justin Gaethje puts him out in less than two minutes. Oh, I, I, I would drop my rent on that for next. I week. would do. I would do. <laughs> I, he holds his chin so high. I'm like, I don't know how he has not been like just dog water and out. And okay. granted. That could be a testament to just how good his chin is. I guess yeah. to play devil's advocate there, but like, I don't know, man. I the Jared Gooden fight. He looked good in his other three when he was fighting tomato cans. So like, that doesn't really matter. <laughs> but like, you don't win cage warriors for no reason. I will say, but another problem with Patty is just hit, how much he blows up in between fights, dude. Like that's yeah. just he what blew up to like you know, 195, 200, and then had to cut back down to one forty five. Course. that's that's crazy that's anyway. that's that's one thing that we'll see dylan do a lot like not not blow up to the opposite of that that's what i mean <laughs> uh, he's dylan stays in great shape in between fights he does, like, he does he's it's extremely important and you'll hear him talk about this all the time too if you guys ever get the chance to talk to him you got if you stay ready you don't have to get ready right mm. dylan does a great job with that another guy who did a great job with that to kind of pull on the heartstrings of some of you older fans was paul felder Paul Felder yes. did an excellent job with that. He hired a nutritionist. He did it correctly, and he could make weight whenever. Dylan mm -hmm. can make weight whenever. Char uh, Cowboy Cerrone, he can make weight whenever. You know, so it's important to be able to do that. And I don't think yeah. that Patty Pimblett will ever get to that level of discipline that you'll see from guys on their way to the top. Nope, I agree. <laughs>